I can turn the time over to him. Thank you so much, Cody and, and uh, Sterling and Vin, for this event. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I didn't realize I was going to witness my own funeral, all these nice things that were said about me. <laughs> uh, May you rest in peace. Yes. <laughs> my buddy John Dugo, he is really proof of everything. for 14 years. He's the tightest guy I've ever been around. <laughs> His garments are snapping when he walks down the street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's a great guy. He's uh, totally honest and he believes in small government and he's, he's excellent. I love him. There's a lot of people in this community I love. Uh, I'll just start with one thing. I had a tough year last year. Uh, right before the session on January 12th, well, on January 7th, I uh, dropped my lovely wife, Sherry, off at a clinic. She's had back issues. She was a registered nurse for 40 years. And uh, she hadn't retired yet. We had celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary on December 27th. We were married since high school. And uh, we took her in there and uh, she got an injection and they failed to monitor her and she died. And so on January 12th, she was five days later, she was brain dead. But uh, I said, man, this is, this is a sucker punch here. I would never expect that. I always figured I'd. I didn't take very good care of myself. I figured I'd die early. So, anyway, it's been a tough year, but uh, in my life, I've always had the feeling that if you get get to work and work on things, and you forget yourself, that you can make it through. And it's been people like you, and it's been helping Phil and working with Phil and working with your commissioners and senators to to get you through it. And it's been a good couple, good year and a half. And, Rough on my kids. I had uh, my 24th grandchild on Wednesday. Great grandchild. There's four, there's four great grandchildren and 20 grandchildren. And that little baby got sent to Life Flight up to Salt Lake. She's going to be okay, but she was in Cedar City and she had some issues. But I've been very, very blessed in my life. Very blessed. I've been blessed to live in southern Utah. I've been blessed to raise cows and be in the cow business for 40 years. I've been blessed to put up hay. I've been blessed to live out on a beautiful ranch where I wake up in the morning and deer coming down and there's bald eagles. And, uh, so I can relate to San Juan County, the reds and the blacks and the browns and the lions and the shumways and your ancestors. Uh, my great great grandfather uh, was a guy by the name of Prime Thornton Coleman and he was good friends with uh, John Dooley, John D. Lee. I've done a Chuck Diary. Mm -hmm. I talked about their association, and that's Mike Lee's great great grandfather. 20 years ago, when they made the Grand Staircase Escalating National Money, I could look out my back door and hike up on the hill out in the Grand Staircase. And the only thing that's changed is they got a whole bunch of people trying to find out something you're doing wrong. I don't care if it's out like a fire on the sand without a metal pan underneath it, or if it's going past 12 heartbeats out there, including your dog and your horse. That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. The first thing they did is shut down a thousand miles of roads and go back some of them a hundred years. And then try to give us back a permit and say, this is a gift to give you a permit of something that we've owned and constructed, just like Recapture Canyon. I can go back and trace that back with Phil's help back a hundred years when the city council said, here's $500 to go fix the road and Recapture Canyon. Yet a man drives down the road, on an existing road, and he's looking at two years in prison and a $250,000 fine. It's injustice. They're out of control. It's unrighteous dominion. And it's wrong. So, uh, my last 20 years have been really trying to right some of these wrongs. We won a lot of battles, but we've got a lot to go. If we get this monument reversed, it was almost 20 years to the day that this President Obama created this monument. He created more monuments than any president in history just for his legacy because we know he's a narcissistic, arrogant president. He was very arrogant and he didn't care about us. 
and they manipulated the Navajo Indians and they've used them and abused them to say they wanted it. And we know the Utah and Navajo don't want that monument because they wouldn't have elected Rebecca Benelli, who's totally against it. So they used it. So 20 years ago, this happened, and here we go. It's all over again. So I've been through this. And interestingly enough, we've got people that have moved in the community. We sent this proclamation out, HR, or HCR 11 and HCR 12, concurrent resolution to rescind the Bears Ear Monument and HCR 11 and to downsize the Grand Staircase. Those passed on party lines in the House and the Senate signed by our governor. That was a direct request of the entire Utah congressional delegation, Senator Hatch, Senator Lee, Congressman Love, Congressman Chavis, Congressman Bishop, and Congressman Stewart. I sat in their office the day before the inauguration. They said, get this done as fast as you can because we're going to reverse this thing. So we got to keep working on it. The one thing we did in Kane County, people got tired out. We tried a lawsuit. We couldn't, that isn't going to work. That didn't work. Numerous things. And we should have had, if we'd have had a president that had some guts in there at the time, we could have got it done. But we didn't get it done. We had a, a governor, I'll just tell you this flat out, Governor Huntsman stabbed us in the back on the Grand Staircase. Because he came down to Kane County in front of my commissioner and said, our issue is going to be to reverse the Grand Staircase. And it wasn't two weeks or three weeks into the session in 1997 that he went down to the outdoor retailers and said, we're not going to do anything with that money. Totally lied to us. So remember that when he starts to run for senator, because he's going to run for senator. He's not a friend of Southern Utah. He's not a friend of being public lands, keeping them public, and using those lands. I want you to remember that, okay? But in any case, uh, what happened was we had black balloons, we had events, we had, and a, a lady put this in on her Facebook. He said, I looked at these old newspaper writings from 20 years ago. Here they were, all the people that were involved. We just got plain tired out and worn out. And you guys are in that right now. Stay with it. It's good to see these young people in here because you are the ones who are going to have to do this. I'm coming on 70 years old. I've been doing it for 20 something years, 24 years now. And you got to stick with it. The kids have to be involved. The young people have to be involved. It's your kids and your family that you're looking out for. And if you don't, they will take it away from you. You can let them take it away if you do. So let's go after it. Let's get it done. Uh, the session, this session was amazing. We had a great session. It's always fun to get in there, John, and, and uh, watch out because the legislature's in session. What are we going to do to you? We did, in fact, take away the requirement that you have to have a safety inspection on your car. So my seven trucks and three I'm sorry if you do inspections because there's a few people get it, but believe me, the evidence doesn't show the safety inspection. It does one thing. On the day you go in and get it, your vehicle's safe. And then you drive down the road, it might not be safe. So it's your responsibility to make sure your vehicle's safe and your tires are good and your brakes are fair, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk a little bit about Jason Chavis because I talked to him tonight. He's done a great job on this law enforcement. I've been right in the middle of that. I'm going to take a little credit here because I passed the law several years ago, four or five years ago, that said BLM has no authority, law enforcement in the state of Utah. And Judge David Newfer, a Democrat from St. George, I think he's the only Democrat in St. George, isn't he, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he uh, said it was unconstitutional. So I've been working on it to get rid of that. In fact, if you remember in the session uh, two, a year ago, uh, we had an event down in St. George and we had the whole Dixie Center full of people. And we had congressmen, we had all our congressmen down there. We got to testify. And I got up and I said, you guys need to step up and get rid of this BLM and federal law enforcement. I said, this is a shame. And we got this guy, Dan Love, that is running rampant. You know him. He is an enemy of the people of San Juan County, the state of Utah. I know him too because 
Almost every sheriff in the state of Utah literally hates the guy. They can line him up in five minutes and say, this guy should never have been in law enforcement. He is an arrogant, self-centered, self-righteous, dishonest, and you know what? There's retribution. I think he's going to prison. I really do. <laughs> guys that supported him, the Justice Department ought to be right there along with him. Because they never followed what we showed him in proof. Absolute bald-faced lies in court. Despicable. We lost a great doctor. Dr. Red. I know Dr. Red. He was in my community. My wife worked at the hospital. How many babies did he save? How many people did he save that were in accidents? How many Native Americans did he help out? And they tried to pin on him digging graves. He never dug a grave in his life. He was just a good, decent man. And this guy, right now, we're at the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals. We put a good case together. He put a good case together. Anybody that reads it ought to say, total malarkey. I want to make sure, if I get into BLM, that those people that put him under this are held accountable just like Dan Love. <laughs> whether I get there or not, I'm going to work on that because I can tell in black and white where they're a bunch of bald-faced liars. And they wouldn't. You can go to court, you can have all the evidence on your side, and you can get a judge like Judge Robert Shelby, who was the judge that got gay marriage in our state, that was lot friends. We're in the middle of, a, of an issue on a, on a uh, road issue in Canyon Garfield County. We're bringing a special master. 2,000 roads in litigation. We've got Judge Shelby, we got Judge Newford, the chief judge, and we got Judge Watt. One really good guy. Newford, he did some good things for Phil. He's, I think he's, he's green, but he's not as green as he could be. And then you got Shelby. Oh, Monty. Oh, Monty, right. Yeah, my buddy Monty, too. He was a stud, too. He was great. So, anyway, keep, keep writing the petroglyph, boy. You're calling them out. You need to do it. <laughs> we're sitting there. We're, we're in this meeting, and they're talking about uh, getting a special master because we're getting ready to take our roads. And Judge Shelby goes, oh, in the room is the Justice Department, the BLM solicitor, and a guy by the name of Stephen Block right next to him locking hands, holding hands, and rubbing feet under the table. <laughs> and Stephen Block is the lead attorney for SUA. We're in road litigation with him. 15,000 roads in the state of Utah, and the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance is the number one person pushing all this agenda because they want more wilderness. They want more control. They want us off these, quote, public lands because they want to have solitude. Well, you know what I say to people that come down here and say they want solitude? I agree with you. We will make sure we shut everything down right after you go, okay? Just before you came in, we'll shut the whole place down, all right? If that's what you want, because that's what they want. So anyway, he says, I've got to tell you this. I've got to claim this. Uh, I know Mr. Block here. He's a personal friend of my wife and I, and, and uh, his kids on my soccer team, and we went on vacations together, and we're not, you know, we're very close friends, but I'm not going to recuse myself. I'm totally, you know, this, I'm not recused. This is after Bill has been convicted with this guy, and the attorney for Sula is sitting right there with the Justice Department, handing letters, handing notes, writing in the newspaper, writing in their, just lockstep with them. And what is the criteria in the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals if you should recuse yourself as a judge, if a me member of the public thinks that there may be a possible conflict of interest, you should recuse yourself. So what we do, Bill, we went to work with our attorneys. We want to file a motion for him to recuse himself. It hasn't been sentenced yet. Our attorney, oh, no, don't do that. If he gets mad, he'll throw the book at you. Well, wait a minute, I thought this was the United States of America. Can we do that? Can we say that this guy's crooked? He's telling us how crooked Phil is. They didn't want to do it. Literally, literally Phil was going to fire us as their attorneys. I don't care. Neil Kaplan, and what was the other name? Smith? Anyway, 
It was Neil. Anyway. I blocked it out. Anyway. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I have it, okay? I still remembered. I got a memory like an elephant, man. Anyway. And Anna Smith, I think it was. Anyway. Uh, we finally, we finally uh, embarrassed him into it, and we filed a motion for him to recuse himself. And they took that motion, and the Chief Justice gave it to Clark Waters. Clark Waters is a great judge, super good judge, honest guy. Whenever we get a case with him, he follows the Constitution. His nephew was the President of the Senate, uh, Mike Waters, so super conservative. 30 days, 30 days. Friday afternoon, 4 o'clock, all of a sudden, old Robert Shelby, I'm recusing myself. I know what happened. I know exactly what happened. I think Clark Waters went to Shelby and said, hey, Robert, you're done. Either you're going to recuse yourself or I'm going to say you're going to recuse yourself because Nuffer gave it to me and you're out. And he recused himself not only from that case, but he recused himself from the Kane County Garfield County case. So here we got a judge totally biased, has recused himself, wouldn't let evidence come into the case, everything he could do to stop Phil from presenting his evidence, that that was a county road, an RS-2477 road, all that he did. And he recused himself after, and he still has to go, we couldn't get a new trial. We couldn't get a new trial out of it. I mean, I, you sneeze wrong with some of these bad guys, murders and things, and they get a new trial. You can't do it. And this is all about the Justice Department and their pound of flesh. Go read a book by Sidney Powell called License to Lie. And it's all about the Ted Stevens, uh, Senator Ted Stevens, and how they ripped him off so bad. And remember, they threw him out of office because of this whole issue that they conjured up and lied about with a contractor. And that's when the Senate shifted, and that one vote is how we got Obamacare. One guy. That's how close it was. And two years later, three years later, we came back and we found out they'd all lied about that. And another case was the Enron case. They lied about that. And prosecutors actually, one guy actually killed himself. He kind of slit his wrist and hung himself in the basement because he knew he was going to go to jail. And this is what this gal did, this Sidney Powell. She wrote this book, License to Life. Senator Hatch held this book up in front of Loretta Lynch and said, read this book. What did you do to my good friend, Senator Ted Stevens, a World War II bomber veteran? He died like two years later in an airplane accident. But at least he got vindicated. But that's how he went down. They threw him out of office over a bunch of lies and crooked stuff. So I'll tell you what, we have a crooked government. And if there's one thing that I like about Donald Trump is he's got guts and he's going to do something. He's going to change things. So better stick with him. He's our guy. I'm going to stick with him. I'm going to wrap this up. I love representing each and every one of you. I absolutely love it. You guys are the salt of the earth. You got the heritage. You got the background. You got the grit to get it done. I look at Shane here. He played with a good friend, old Kelly Smith from over in Beavers. My son-in-law's a good buddy, and they played in that BYU game where we won the national championship. You got guys like this all throughout this room. Shumway's Mary Blacks and Blacksbury Browns, and we get some tans out of it, you know. <laughs> anyway, you got good hair at you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here tonight to represent each and every one of you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks for it. God bless America. God bless San Juan County.